Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of GenAI Vlog. So today we're going to be talking about how to use Mistral AI agent to help us understand the Simpsons paradox. So let's take a look at what is Simpsons paradox. Let's enter here and let's go to Wikipedia. Here's the concept of Simpsons Paradox. If you're a nerd like me, chances are you've heard of it. Uh, but if you're not, here's a quick explanation of what this thing is. It's a statistical phenomenon uh, such that the data points are presented on an XY plot just like this. Uh, so right in front of us, we have eight circles or eight data points. They are uh, kind of like arranged uh, using color coding. Uh, if you're blue, you are sloping upward. If you're red, you're sloping upward. And that's because of the color coding. But if you remove the color coding, if you look at all these eight dots together as one set of data point, you realize that if you fit a line, you're actually going to get a dotted line, which is sloping downward. So if you look at the coefficient, one model is going to be positive, one model is going to be negative, and they are both statistically significant. And that's precisely the definition of Simpson's paradox. Both are right, but both signs are different. So how do we understand this? How do we come up with a strategy to simulate this kind of phenomena? Today, we're going to be using Mistral AI agent to help us understand this paradox. So let's go to a chatbot that's pre-configured. Let's run it, and we can talk to it. Uh, let's start with something simple uh, that may or may not give us the right answer, right? So maybe I say, I want to understand the Simpsons paradox. Write Pi code for me. So this is actually very high level. Uh, there's uh, pretty much not so much of an instruction at all. Uh, it just have a keyword and that's pretty much it. So if this is the prompt, we are putting a lot of faith in Mistral AI agent. We're putting a lot of faith on chatbot. Uh, to give us the right sets of code, uh, which can be challenging, right? But that's okay. That's what we're doing here. We're testing it out. So let's give a name, test one. And do you want to execute a code? I'll say yes, that's capital Y. And then boom, here we go. We have a couple of results being ran. Uh, so if you take a closer look at this, it's trying to get there uh, in the sense that it did separate group A and group B, and then maybe it give a different success rate. And then one success rate uh, seems like to be going up, uh, the other one seems like to be going down, you know? So it's trying to get there. It's trying to get there in a sense that there are a couple of simple simulations, but not quite. And you can take a look at the code that's just being produced. And uh, it seems like this is uh, just a very simple mathematical calculation. Uh, there's no linear regression whatsoever. So I would say that this is too baby of a step that's uh, probably not sufficient to help us understand Simpson's paradox. So let's close that script. Now let me give you a new script. Now, of course, the user need a little bit of education to be able to produce this prompt, right? I want the following simulation. This is the variable from this package. I want to define the range like this for x1, x2, and then I want to define variable y like this, and I want to define a model like this, right? So it requires a bit more education to put together a prompt like this, in a sense that user needs to fundamentally understand Simpson's paradox. And that's why I find this uh, experiment fascinating, which is because human intelligence actually still trumps the AI intelligence, right? So, uh, of course, the script here, it's much longer now. And as you can see here, we created data in certain strategy, certain way that's listed out in the instruction in the prompt from human. And then we actually fit a linear regression model as instructed. Uh, so let me show you the code. Uh, so we're going to give a name, test2. And then we're going to say capital Y, that means yes, hit enter. Now this is going to run the second script. Uh, so we have a couple of results being generated. We also have a test2.py. And then we also have a scatter plot. So let's examine this one by one. So if you look at the results, the output has two models, model one and model two. Model one is regress Y on X 
meaning that we have just one variable. And if you look at the entire data set as a whole without the condition Z, you realize that this coefficient is actually negative, right? Minus five, that's negative. But if you look at the T stat, it's actually minus 40, which is way above the absolute value of 95% confidence interval, uh, which is uh, plus and minus two, right? So 40 is greater than two, right? So that means this coefficient is statistically significant in model one, yet the sign is negative. If you look at the model two, we are regressing Y on not just X, but also on the variable Z as a binary variable. And if you look at the coefficient of X in the second model, it turned out to be 1.9. So it's a drastically different number than minus five, and yet it is still statistically significant. So this two linear regression model demonstrated the concept of Simpson's paradox. We are running regression on y and x, but how come that we added a variable z, the results change completely differently, uh, yet they're both significant. So that is the definition of paradox. Now, if you have the stats background, this table should make perfect sense. However, if you don't understand it, you can examine the code a little bit. So let's open up test2.py and put them side by side. You can see that here, we generate the data point according to certain strategy. We generate x1, x2 separately, and then we create a z that's a binary variable. And then we created X and Y based on this definition, uh, which is actually provided by human with the understanding of Simpson's paradox. Uh, you then fit a regression model, uh, plot a plot, so on and so forth. The last thing I want to show you guys is a plot, uh, because it also create a plot for us. And as you can see here, the plot makes perfect sense, right? We have two color coding, meaning we have two groups. If you look at the color coding by itself, the yellow group of data points go up, the purple group of the data points also go up. So within group, the slope is positive. That makes perfect sense. That's what we're trying to show here. Within group, if you add a variable Z, that's the color coding, the X is 1.9. And that is the relationship within group. And the yellow dots sloping up, as well as the purple dots also sloping upward. If you ignore the color, let's say I don't have this variable Z, I just have a variable X and that's it. That's the model I'm running. It turned out that this is actually negative. And that should make sense because if you look at both groups of dots without the color, you can kind of see that they are negatively diagonalized. And if you run regression on that, it gives you a downward sloping and that's also statistically significant. So there you go. Hopefully you understand a little bit of how powerful Mistral AI agent is. However, I also want to share some light that it's not powerful enough to completely omit human education and human understanding. The humans that with the understanding of certain phenomena will of course have a much higher hand while they're equipped with AI agents and they'll be able to do much more things in a very short amount of time. Thank you for watching, subscribe and like.